Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Anybody glad to be here live with today? Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We've come to bless him. We've come to honor him. We've come to lift him. We've come to bless him. Anybody came to bless the name of the Lord? Then I need somebody to make some noise in the building. I need somebody to lift your praise tonight. He's a wonderful God. He's a holy God. And tonight we celebrate freedom. We celebrate freedom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody, clap your hands and make some noise. Bless the Lord more and more and more. I'm going to sing louder than before. Oh, oh, oh. And if you love the Lord, everybody scream. Yeah. Show freedom. 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 Everybody show freedom.
lift your hands, open up your mouth. Come on, everybody say hallelujah. 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 Come on, say hallelujah. Now come on, clap your hands and give them the highest praise. Come on, clap your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're the God of miracles. Signs and wonders. We believe in your power. Hey. You're the God of miracles. Signs and wonders. We believe in your power. We believe in your power help me say that his praises shall continually be in my mouth. 
I said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Is anybody glad to be in church tonight? Come on, I said, is anybody glad to be in church tonight? Did you come to bless the name of the Lord? Come on, you could be anywhere else tonight, but God allowed you to make it back into his holy temple, and you ought to be glad about that. Let's all stand across the house and begin to raise our hymnal for the evening. Hold to God's unchanging hand. tonight hails to us from the book of Philippians chapter 3 
verses 12 through 16, and this is what the word of the Lord says. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching forward to those which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many are mature, have this mind. And if anything in you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Would you take your neighbor by the hand as we will go to God in prayer? It's prayer time. Would you hold somebody's hand? Our Father and our strong God, we come before you tonight to say thank you. Oh God, we say thank you for your goodness and your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your faithfulness. God, thank you because the reality of the matter is you've been so, so, so good to us. God, you've kept us and you've bought us from a mighty long way. So God, we come tonight to pause and say thank you. God, thank you for bringing us back into your house just one more time. God, it's one more day that you've kept us with our minds stayed on you. So God, we come into this house tonight to give your name glory, to give your name honor, and to give your name praise. God, you kept us through another year, 365 days that you've protected us, 365 days that you've cared for us, 365 days that you've loved us, 365 days that you have maintained our lives. God, we come tonight to praise you for that. And we pray that while we are in this house tonight, God, that you will begin to restore us. We pray that while we're here, that you begin to heal us. God, somebody drug themselves into this building tonight, beat up by life, beat up by the enemy, beat up by this past year. But tonight, God, we declare and decree victory in this house. God, we declare that what we went through this year will not follow us into this next year. God, we come into this house and we squeeze our neighbor's hand to let our neighbor know what it feels like to hold a hand of a survivor. And we squeeze Please, our neighbor's hand uh, to let my neighbor know that whatever you've been going through, baby, it did not kill you. And I squeeze my neighbor's hand a final time to let them know uh, that the worst is over and the best is yet to come. And you ain't seen nothing yet. And we pray tonight, oh God, uh, that you will open up a window and pour out blessings uh, that we won't have room to receive. We pray that somebody will be healed. We pray somebody will be delivered. We pray change would fall off. We pray somebody would be set free uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus. And as a result of the preached word tonight, uh, we pray that we live better and we'll walk better and we'll talk better and our family will be better and our finances will be better. And God, this is our prayer tonight. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus and we clap our hands and we open up our mouths and we give you the best praise that we have because we believe that it's already done.
Listen, we're moving. This is the moment where we want to begin to greet all of the neighbors, all of you, all of us who are here. Come on, turn to the person beside you. Just put a big smile on your face. Shake your neighbor's hand and tell them it's good to see you tonight. Come on, shake, shake your neighbor's hand. Give them a big hug. Put a big smile on your face and tell them, I'm glad you came to church tonight. It's good to see you.
No, I dare you just to shout as loud as you can. I made it! Come on, come on. You ain't said, I dare you just to shout as loud as you can. I made it! Tell that way, hate him. Tell that way, enemy. I made it, I made it out all right. and give God praise. Thank you. I made it. Listen, I want to take a moment to begin to welcome all of those who are worshiping with us for the first time tonight. If you're a guest and you're here for the first time tonight, just take a brief stance. We want to just give you a welcome tonight. If you're a guest tonight, just take a brief stance. Amen. Wow. Amen. You may take your seats. On behalf of our pastor, Dr. Dante L. Hickman Sr., the entire leadership and the discipleship of the Southern Baptist Church, we welcome you. We welcome you to pray and praise God with us. 
If you're seeking Christ in the church where you, you could be encouraged, excited, and empowered, we ask that you would consider us. Our ushers are passing around a guest registration card. We pray that you would fill that card out and put it into the offering basket when you come around or just give it back to them. Our pastor would love to personally write you this week. We also want to say hello to all of those who might be worshiping with us via the World Wide Web. Wherever you may be, across this our God's globe, we know you could be doing anything with your time tonight. But we say thank you for tuning in with us here at southernbaptistchurch.org. Can we give God praise for all of our guests here and in our virtual church? Are y'all enjoying this choir tonight? Can we give God praise for our choir? Come on, you can give it, a give it up for our choir leading us into the presence of God. They're coming back with just a few selections. And after that, we will hear from our pastor, Dr. Dante L. Hickman. Are y'all ready for the word? Come on, are y'all ready for the word? One more time, give God praise. Our choir is coming. And after that, we will hear our pastor.
Do you know how you survived 2019? Do you know how you made it this far by faith? The God who governs, say it. Come on, look at somebody and tell them, the Lord has protected me on every leading side. Around me. around me, whom shall I? Whom the old folk used to say all night and all day, angels are watching over me. You don't know how many demons tried to attack you, steal your joy and kill your peace this year. But God has put angels around you. Who has set in captivity? Somebody ought to thank God for his protection. Well, what the devil tried to do, it didn't work. Come on, somebody shout, I made it to the last night of the year. If you're glad that you made it, give God the best praise you have. Let's, let's go to the word of God on tonight, the gospel of Mark chapter 8, beginning at verse 22, concluding with verse 26, and the Lord spoke to us that 2020 is our year of miracles and manifestations. You don't have to stress and worry about nothing. God's going to take care of everything that you need. Devils will rise and devils will fall. God's going to take care of every one of your needs. Mark chapter 8, beginning at verse 22. It says, Then Jesus came to Bethsaida, and they brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. So he took the blind man by the hand and 
led him out of town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands on him, he asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. What kind of drugs was he on? <laughs> then he put his hands on his eyes again and made him look up. And he was restored and saw everyone clearly. Then he sent him away to his house. And he gave him this strange commandment. He said, don't go back into town and don't tell anybody in town what I've done for you. Before you take your seat, look at somebody beside you and say, neighbor, neighbor. Whatever, you do, whatever you do in 2020, in 2020. Don't, settle don't settle for what you can see. Come on, give God praise tonight. It's my fourth time tonight. Pray my strength in the Lord. Don't settle for what you can see. By the time of our text, the disciples and Jesus had arrived in Bethsaida. After feeding a multitude of more than 4,000 people with seven loaves of bread. And when Jesus had arrived in this town, the disciples brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. What is interesting here is that these were the same disciples who had just witnessed Jesus a few chapters ago feed a multitude of more than 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two small fish. And despite their lack of faith, he fed another 4,000 people with seven loaves of bread that were the leftovers of the disciples. And now they have the nerve to look for Jesus to prove that he can perform another miracle. They're not unlike many of us, that God has brought us through one thing or another. And yet we have spiritual amnesia as soon as we run into another obstacle obstruction or opponent and now we're looking for God to prove that he can do it all over again but the same God who did it before is the same God that can do it over and over again in our lives these disciples teach us by their actions that some people will always look for you and I to prove ourselves to them over and over again because of their inability to embrace our power. But God told me to tell you tonight, be faithful to your assignment. Despite other people's misunderstanding or need for entertainment, according to the text, Jesus took the blind man out of town to heal him because he empathized with his condition and he did not allow the motives of the disciples to prevent the ministry of restoration for this brother. They had the wrong motives, but Jesus had the right ministry and miracle for this man's situation. And I don't know about you tonight, I thank God that he blesses us despite the motives of people who brought us to be blessed in the first place. Because a long life I've learned that everybody that helps you to get a job, everybody that helps you to get a promotion, everybody that helps you to get a relationship, everybody that helps you to get a blessing does not necessarily do it for you as much as they have their own agenda. But God has an assignment for you beyond the agenda of other people. 
It doesn't matter what their motives are. God says what the devil meant for evil. He'll turn it around and work it out for our good. So the Bible says that Jesus took the blind man away from the people. And when he took him out of town, he spit on his eyes and laid his hands on him. And I believe that Jesus took him away from the crowd because everybody would not be able to handle his process. Some people would have looked and said, how disgusting that Jesus would disrespect that young man. They may have alerted and alarmed him and caused him to abort his own process because he didn't understand what God was up to. What I'm merely trying to tell us tonight is sometimes public success will require a private process. Everybody doesn't need to be in your business. You don't need to put everything on Facebook or Instagram. Some prayers are meant to be prayed at home. And for God's sake, don't tell everybody what you're praying for. Because if you put it in the atmosphere, not only will God send his angels to make it happen, but the devil will send his imps to try to stop it from happening. So some stuff you got to keep to yourself in the meantime. I've discovered that while we're going through our process, it will expose some of our issues. Watch the text. When Jesus laid his hands on the brother, he asked him, what do you see? And he said, I see men as trees walking. When he said that, Jesus knew he had some issues and some imperfections. And I don't care how holy you think you are, and how good you look tonight. All of us in here have some issues and some imperfections. Lean over and tap somebody and tell them, you too, you too. I, I don't care what your title is. I don't care how many memory verses you can quote. I don't care what kind of anointing you have on your life. All have sinned and are still sinning and coming short of the glory of God. And it ain't none of your business what my sin is. Come on, look at somebody beside you and tell them I can be a mess, but I'm God's mess. Now, it's one thing to have issues and imperfections. But it's another thing to let other people be privy to your issues and imperfections. Because I found out you can't tell everybody about what you're dealing with. Because no matter how healed and delivered you become, people will always try to keep you where they used to know you. And somebody ought to testify tonight, I'm not where I should be, but I'm not who I used to be. There was a time I cussed you out in 30 seconds. Now it takes me a good 30 minutes. Come on, somebody shout, I'm not who I used to be. Nevertheless, I'm glad that when Jesus asked him, what did he see? That the brother was honest. Because a lot of us are so super spiritual. 
that, we would have settled for blurred vision. And don't look now, but a lot of people are walking around blessed, but blurred in their vision of who God is, of who they are, and of what they're supposed to do. And there's nothing worse than being blessed, but still blind as to how blessed you are. Some of y'all came in church and you ain't praised them yet. Some of you walked in church discouraged, depressed, and despondent. Some of y'all came to church complaining and bickering about what you didn't get for Christmas and what didn't happen to you in 2019 when you ought to be thanking God that you still walking, you still talking, you still eating, you still living. There's some people who are in the hospital, some people in jail, some people living outdoors you ought to give God praise for what he kept you through come on come on look at somebody tell them I'm blessed and I know I'm blessed but in this next season you and I are going to need 2020 spiritual vision you and I in this next season will need to see clearly who's for us and who's against us and let me give you some wisdom right here when God shows you who's against you don't tell them you know they're against you no, she ain't never liked you when she walk up to you and say, girl, I want to take you to lunch. You want to say, yeah, girl, I'm going this free. You don't have to tell Judas that you know he going to stab you in the back. Sometimes you got to know who the devil is and keep him close. You need to know where you're going. You need to know what, what God has for you. And Jesus, in this text, helps us to help each other, watch this, by not assuming that the man had received his sight. Y'all missed that. Jesus has all power. And when Jesus does a thing, Jesus does it completely. But he asked this man, because Jesus discerned, he got some other issues. He said, tell me, not can you see, but what do you see? Why did he ask him? Because Jesus understood that sometimes people will act like they have something that they really don't have. Preach Dante. And then you and I will have a nerve to get all upset when people don't turn out to be what we thought they were supposed to be because we judge them by how they look on the outside. Can I tell you that people can look mature and still be really childish? People can look spiritual but really be far away from God. People can look wealthy by the car that they drive, but you will find out at the end of the month that they are broke as a joke. People can look like they're sane, but they are really crazy on the inside. And don't look now, but you might be sitting next to somebody that's got a few marbles loose. I dare you to ask them, are you crazy? If they look off to the left, you better move your seat. Don't be deceived by how people look. The Bible says, try the spirit by the spirit. If it don't feel right, it ain't right. And if you ain't that spiritual, Learn how to ask some questions. 
Come on, look at somebody tell them, stop assuming, stop assuming. You see somebody shouting next to you when they sit down and say, what did you feel? Was that for real? Jesus says, don't assume that people have received their sight. And then Jesus said, watch it, don't accept responsibility for people who lack sight. Jesus said, ain't nothing wrong with my power. Yeah, yeah, when I save you, I saved you. But, but, but Jesus said, the man said, I see men as trees. This is how you know Jesus' power worked. Before Jesus touched him, he couldn't see anything. But after he could see, Jesus discovered that there were layers to his dysfunction. Somebody better help me preach tonight. Because you and I must realize that we can't change people overnight. Don't you think because you're going to get married to him that he's going to stop drinking and stop abusing and stop doing everything that he did before he married you. You need to understand tonight that if you're going to be with somebody, you've got to be willing to engage their layers of issues. Can I preach? That's why some of y'all ought to shout, please be patient with me. God ain't through with me yet I'm saved but I still need to be sanctified they see some of y'all act all holy tonight and bougie cause you in church but you know after you get this shout on you go into the club and get you a couple drinks come on and fess up and shout I'm saved but God's still working on me I'm saved, but I still need to be healed. I'm saved, but I still need to be delivered. I can praise God with the best of them, but I still have some imperfections. And I'm so glad that God didn't wipe me out when God had a chance. He could have killed me last January, but somebody ought to thank God that he let you live one more year. He gave you one more chance. Can I just thank God for one more? What? Let me get out your way subsequently. Jesus didn't become angry. No, some of y'all get mad because people ain't perfect. And you keep forgetting that you ain't perfect. Come on, we sat around my house all the time. Let me give it to you. Look at your neighbor and say, you ain't perfect. <laughs> Sitting around here expecting out of somebody else what you cannot expect out of yourself. Bible said, Jesus did not become angry. Instead, he made some adjustments. And I'm preaching this sermon because this year is our year of miracles and manifestations. And the Spirit of God is saying that many of us are almost where we need to be. Come on, look at somebody, tell them you're almost there. You're almost at that next level. All it requires of you is to make some minor adjustments. You ain't got it all together, but thank God, God's going to give you a space of grace. He's going to give you a chance to change. And I need you to help me to preach tonight, to get it in the house. Tell your neighbor your next level is right around the corner. But in order for you to see your next level a blessing, you have to be willing to embrace God's process. Somebody shout, I'm in process. I told you, Jesus took him out of town. That's separation. He spit in his eyes. That's humiliation. 
He touched him again. That's determination. Y'all still ain't shouting yet. Because you don't understand that sometimes in order to get what God has for you, that you got to be separated from some people. And you crying because of who left you, but God sent me back here to tell you that they didn't break up with you. God broke you away from them. And you ought to thank God for every person that God took out of your life. Don't you cry another minute that you had to get divorced. God told you never to marry them in the first place. And you ought to thank God that everybody that stabbed you in your back, you're still standing to tell your testimony. So this first shout is for those of you that want to say thank God. God for separating me from some people that should have never been in my life. Can I preach like a fillet? Sometimes you and I need to be humiliated in order to learn humility. That's why God spit in his eyes because you got to learn humility. Can I break it down to you like this? You can't be needy and arrogant at the same time. Come on in here church. I know you want to be bougie. I know you want to make everybody think that you got it going on and if everything is going well in your life you can sit down and shut up. If you don't need nothing from God you have my permission to walk out of this church but if you are like me and know you can't make it no, you can't take it. No, you can't shake it without the help of God in your life. You know you can't live and move and have your being without the power of God. Don't sit there like a bump on the log. Lift up your hands and shout, I will bless the Lord at all times. I don't care who's looking at me. I'll shout all over your toes because I need God to guide me. He kept me through 2019 and I'm determined that he's going to keep me in 2020. Can I preach like a feeling? Somebody shall thank God for separation. Thank God for humiliation and then thank God for his determination. Can I preach like I feel it? The Bible says that he touched the man, but after he touched him, he still didn't get it all together. And somebody ought to thank God that he touched you last January and you still fell short. He blessed you in February, March, and April and you still messed up. He blessed you again in May, June, and July and you still didn't dot every eye. He kept you through August, September, October, and November and you still messed up. But you know why you're still here? It's because God is willing to touch you again. Somebody ought to give God praise. Throw up your hands and say, Lord, I'm sorry for all my sins. I'm sorry that I didn't see it like you saw it. I'm sorry that I didn't praise you like I should have praised you. But I'm here tonight on December 31st, 2019, six minutes away from 2020. And I'm praying, Lord, touch me again. If you want them to touch you, shout touch me. Touch my family. Touch my finances. Touch my body. Touch my mind. Touch my spirit. Touch my house. Touch my enemies. Say yes. Touch me again. Good night, church. May the Lord bless all of y'all real, real good. But shake somebody's hand and say, neighbor, your next level is dependent 
upon you embracing God's process but then embrace God's progress yes I need about 20 of y'all to get out in the eye and say thank God he's brought me from a mighty long way tell somebody excuse me I got to walk and thank God because he kept me from this and that from a every hurt harm and danger y'all ain't feeling me I'm a Bible preacher the Bible says after somebody shout after he received his sight Jesus said go back home and he told him don't tell nobody shake somebody's hand like you're gonna shake it off and say neighbor in 2020 don't tell nobody what God has done why you ain't gotta say it cuz they gonna see it they saw you when you were broke they saw you when you were sick they saw you when you were depressed they saw you when you were about to lose your mind but next year they gonna see God pick you up turn you around put your feet on solid ground so just lift up your hands and shout thank you I've had some good days I've had some bad days I've had some hills to climb but when I look back and think things over my good days my 2019 doesn't outweigh my 2020 so I will not complain if God has been good to you let the redeemed of the Lord shout yay yes 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 come on hug five people and tell them he's been good to me Somebody shout, it's looking better for me. It's looking better for me. In two more minutes, God's going to take you from your past to your promise. Shout, yeah. shout I'm ready I'm ready come on this ain't a get ready get ready somebody shout I'm ready I'm ready I'm ready I'm ready come on you ain't saying it I'm ready I'm ready I'm ready for my breakthrough I'm ready for my healing I'm ready for my favor shout I'm ready Wait a minute, it's almost 2020. And I wanna find, I want God to find me praying and praising his name. So come on, let's just thank him right. Lord, we wanna say thank you. You've been so good to us. You kept us through another year. You've seen us through seen and unseen dangers. 
We just want to say thank you, God. You worked it out for us. You opened doors for us. You built bridges for us. You made ways for us. Thank you, Lord. You took care of us. You protected us. We didn't deserve it. We didn't earn it. But tonight we want to say thank you for your grace, for your mercy, for your unconditional love, for your power, for your anointing, for your joy. Thank you for peace. Thank you for peace. Thank you for peace. And now, and now, and now, we celebrate a brand new year, a brand new season, a brand new day. We see clearly now the rain is gone. What the devil tried to do, it didn't work. We praise you in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. Somebody shout happy new year. Somebody else. Come on, I need you to come out of your aisle and tell them this is your season. 2020 is your year of miracles and manifestations. The way you start it is how you're going to finish it. Give them the best praise you got. Oh. I got a feeling everything is going to be all right. Gonna be alright, be alright, be alright. Oh, be alright, 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 all right, 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 all right. What he's 
done for me. Come on, you don't know like I know how he set me free. We're about to go in a minute, but somebody needs to get a praise out. Somebody needs to put a praise in. He's been good to you. somebody just tell them I see miracles happening for you before I came to church today the devil was trying to flood me with all kind of bad news but I'm grateful I came to church tonight and I came to this church tonight because no matter what the devil said, God says, I see miracles happening for you. If you receive it, just throw your hands up and shout it, I see miracles. And even if you don't see it, ask God to touch you again. He'll keep touching you until you see it. I see miracles. 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 Happening. Happening for you. If you believe. If you believe then. With all of your heart. If you believe in something.
I believe. I believe. Do you believe, church? I believe. I don't have to manipulate it. I don't have to control it. God's going to do it for me. Come on, just say it. God's going to do it for me. I believe. somebody's life tonight. God's trying to live. Stay right here. Don't go. Don't go. Don't go, please. God's, God's trying to bless you in a new way tonight. And what I preached to you, it connected to you. You felt it. But there's someone here tonight that needs a relationship with Jesus Christ. You need to receive him as Lord of your life tonight because he has a future for you that's far greater than your past. He has miracles for you, but you will not see the miracle until you see him. Too many of us are looking for the blessing, but we're not looking for the blesser. You will never know what God has for you until you know he is for you. He's on your side. He's been walking beside you all your life. Now he wants to, you to invite him to live inside. If you're here under the sound of my voice, the best thing you can do on the first day of a brand new year is to say yes to Jesus. You ain't got to be perfect, and you won't be perfect overnight. But won't you begin this, this miraculous relationship with him tonight? If you want to receive Christ, don't be ashamed or afraid. Excuse yourself from wherever you are and start walking to me now. Come down any one of these aisles. Pastor, I want to be saved. I want to believe in Christ. I want to be baptized. I see you. Brother. Come on, somebody else. Somebody else, get up. Start moving this way. Tonight is your night. This is for you. Come on. Come on, let God have his way in your life. The devil tried to kill you last year, but he ain't going to get you this year. Because you're going to trust in God by faith. Pastor, I'm already saved. Man, I love the Lord. I just want to join this church. I want to be a disciple of Christ in Southern. I want you to be my pastor. I want to continue my walk with the Lord in this ministry. We'd love to have you as a part of our family of faith. If that's you, come on. Come on. Come on. Step out by faith. Join church tonight. Do it now. Do it now. Come on, family. Come on, family. Come on. Come on. Wherever you are. Come on. Come on, brother. Praise God, church. Somebody give God praise. Somebody else. It ain't too late. It ain't too late. It ain't too late. Come on. Come on. If you're saved and you know it, in church growing, give God the best praise you got. Have you been blessed tonight? Before we give our offering, before we give our offering, 16 years ago, wow. yeah. this miracle came into our lives. My son Dante turned 16 right now. I tell it all the time, it was a snowy, icy night. 
we had just praised God at watch night service. I was tired. I got in bed, and Daniel said, it's time to go. I said, go where? She said, Dante is coming. I said, I'm already here. She said, no, boy, my water done broke, fool. It's time to go to the hospital. This boy is a miracle child. Six months into our pregnancy, we were having complications and went to a hospital. And the doctor said, abort this baby now. He's not going to live. We called our obstetrician and he said, get the hell out of there now. And come and see me in the morning. Obstetrician said, ain't nothing wrong with this boy. He's going to be fine. On January 1st, we were trying to get him out, and every time we pushed, I said we, because it was painful for me too, his heart would stop. And the doctor said, if you push one more time, he's going to die. We got him out of there because God is a miracle worker. And I know he is saying, Dad, get your hands off my hair. But I just want to praise God for my sons, Dante Lamont Hickman Jr. and Dawson Luke. Come on, give it up for my boys. Come on. Happy birthday. That's right. It's my son. Yes. If it's your birthday, make some noise. <laughs> show of faith that we're moving forward to the glory of God. In fact, that's our theme for 2022, pursuing the glory of God. I want you to be a part of everything that's happening in the life of our church. Listen, if you'd like to volunteer, I need you to sign up today. I need you to email me at Pastor Hickman at Southern Baptist Church dot org pastor hickman at southern baptist church dot org whether you want to be in our evangelism and outreach ministries where you can serve in our technology and our media department you can help us with our ministries whether you want to be on our worship ministries and the choir or our first impressions of greeters and hospitality and security services our discipleship ministry where we'll be doing Christian education and training our children or any number of our ministries, I need you to email me today. We need all hands on deck. We're coming back to serve notice on the devil that nobody deserves glory but God for bringing us through this season. I also want you to know that the church is hiring we are hiring administrative staff persons. If you'd like to help and work in our church office, we need you to sign up, submit your resume today. You can do that also at Pastor Hickman at southernbaptistchurch.org. We're moving forward to the glory of God. I'm excited about what's coming our way. Now then, my dear brothers and sisters, I want to say thank you for all of the gifts and contributions that you have made across these two years and you've been committed to doing electronically. I want you to know uh, that you can give through our website at southernbaptistchurch.org. You can download the Givelify app, find our church and our address, and give securely there. 
or you can uh, text the word give to the number that's on the screen and follow the prompts and give spiritually as well as securely there. As al always, thank God for those of you who mail in or call in or drop off your gifts at the church. Please know that as you give, you give as unto the Lord and God loves a cheerful giver. All right, we're getting ready to go down from this place, but never from the presence of God. What a great service this has been. And I'm praying for all of you that you would get home safely. Somebody came around here, gave their offering, and the wind blew, and I smelled all the weed in the city. I still, I don't court contact. I'm high. Lord, Lord, touch them again. Amen. Touch them again. I'm just glad you came to church. Amen. Have you been blessed tonight? As we go down from this place, let's not end it like a two by four service. Let's, let's end it in high Holy Ghost fashion. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Somebody tell them have a good night in Jesus. God bless you.